In this video, I'm going to refurbish my great-grandfather's wind chimes. I'm going to reuse the chimes along with some red oak that I had left over from a previous project. I've always thought that these chimes were copper. Um, I've only really seen them in this form, so it became quickly apparent as I started using this cleanser that uh, it was actually stainless steel that was painted. So. I started to clean them up and I decided to go with a more patina look instead of taking it all the way off uh, to try to preserve some of that original look. This turned out better than I thought. I like the patina look and I think it'll go well with the materials that I chose. It's pretty simple to make these from scratch, uh, so maybe I'll try to show that in a later video. But I think they turned out great. Can't wait to see them in the final product. Here's where I'm trying to find the center of my top platform or my top circle, making sure that I have enough room since I decided to go with a six and a quarter inch diameter, which matches the original wind chime. I've seen this method in short DIY videos to make a radius so it didn't go well the first couple times which I'll cut out but it turned out pretty good in the end I think I'll use this method again After I have my shape, it's time to cut and sand. Fun fact, the inside diameter of a typical roll of painter's tape is three inches. And that's what I decided to go with for the clapper or the striker part of the wind chime. I decided to freehand the sail on the bottom. I went with a inch and a half radius for the larger side, and then I just kind of freehanded the top to make it a nice radius. Now 
Now these didn't turn out perfect with the jigsaw and the orbital sander, but I think that's kind of the theme of the project at this point. I did a rough round over to give them a nice clean rounded look, and I really like the way they turned out. using a water-based polyurethane and I really only went with one coat on this project being that it was red oak a hardwood and that I didn't think it was going to be in a lot of direct sunlight I was able to justify that now if you're using a softer wood something like pine you may want to do the recommended three coats just make sure that you uh, wait the two hours between dry time because the finish really uh, gets messed up if you touch it while it's tacky now this is a method I use to lay out the holes for my eye hooks where I'll be using the wire and chain um, to hook everything together. I ended up tracing it all but I didn't need the sail portion so oh well. I use trial and error to try to get six equal pieces since I have six chimes. And here you see me trying to line up the chimes to make sure I have enough room on my placement for the clapper or the striker on the inside. After I was confident with my layout, I went ahead and marked all the locations on each of the three pieces. Here are the final pieces with all the eye hooks installed. To attach the chimes to the top platform, I use 16th inch stainless steel cable and use ferrules um, to loop them in to the chimes. And here's where I just take it through the existing holes, which you would have drilled if you made it yourself. And then I tried to match the loop with all the other ones that I made. I have one previously that I was trying to match here at the bottom.
I tried to use pliers on these ferrules and it did not turn out great. I ended up picking up these $15 crimpers and they worked really well. When it came time to install the chimes on the top platform, I was really careful on the loop size and the distance from the top of the chime to the top platform. I ended up coming up with a dimension of about four inches, so that's what I tried to maintain throughout all six of the chimes. I went with a black chain to connect the top platform to the clapper to the sail. I went with a dimension of about three to four inches from the bottom of the shortest chime to the clapper. And then I went about four inches below the longest chime for the sail. I used three equal lengths of the same black chain for the top string. And I used a couple links from a larger chain to make that top ring. Overall, this was a fun and easy project and by no means was it perfect, nor did it need to be. After sitting tattered and unused for so long, it was really amazing to bring my great-grandfather's wind chimes back to life. My family appreciated them, and it turned out to be a great Mother's Day present that we can all enjoy.